this me, this I thought, this individual, this sense of separation, this me, I, only is happy when it gets what it wants and things go its way. And the rest of the time, it's in a state of up and down and up and down and up and down. Its happiness is directly depending on what happens in the other world, what happens in the outside world. Because the outside world directly influences its emotional state. Oh yeah, I got some... I got some good news that she wants to marry me. I'm very happy. I got some bad news that she decided not to marry me. Now I'm depressed. I got good news that um, all the pandemic is over and we're done with the virus, so I'm really happy. I got the good news, the bad news that the pandemic is getting worse and uh, it's getting very dangerous, now I'm very sad. So all of its happiness and satisfaction is depending on what is going on in the other world, outside world. Including, when I say the outside world, I'm including what you're thinking, your thoughts and your emotions, including the body, your body. It's still in the outside. All of them are objects. Your thoughts, your emotions, and your body, they're objects. Just like your computer is an object. Just like your phone. If you're having a phone, it's an object. That's what it is. Same thing. Your thoughts are objects. Your emotions are objects. They're objects because you can notice them, that they come and go. You're aware of them. You're aware of existence, their existence, as something that is keep changing all the time. So there must be objects. Otherwise, if you were your thinking mind. If you were your thoughts, then you would never know. You wouldn't be able to identify that you're thinking all the time because that would be your only reality from the time you were born to the time you die. Then your busy mind would not create any kind of issues for you because you would be one with it. The reason it's creating issues for you because you are somewhere away from it. You're able to see it from the outside. You're able to hear it. And you're not hearing it all the time because it's not consistent. There's gaps of silence in between your stream of thoughts. So that's why you're aware of thoughts happening because there's something separated, something is away from it. That it sees, it appears, and it sees, it disappears. So in this stream of thoughts, there is one big thought which is, says, I, me. You're referring to yourself. I don't like this, I like that, I feel good, I feel bad. I remember last week I met with my friend. I remember yesterday I went and had a hamburger. It wasn't that good. I liked it, I didn't like it. This I that you refer to as yourself, which is completely false, it's not even real only can survive, only exists based on relating itself to something else. It has to connect itself to something else. And if you recognize that and you are really on it and you take this spiritual discipline, it requires getting on top of it. 
You can't just be dilly dally 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 dally. Ah, okay. No, you have to really tight up your belt and you say, you know what? I'm really going for it. So if you recognize it and you cut its connection to everything else that it wants to connect itself, it can't stand on its own and it has to fall back into its source where it came from. And when you're doing this exercise on a regular basis, you make that your practice, what happens is you're going to dis discover yourself going into long periods of silence, long periods of peace and quiet and balance and periods that you are completely blissed out or you are in some sort of a low dosage of bliss but you are very, very happy. But this is not ultimate happiness because it is not permanent. You have to work on it on a regular basis in order to get there. But it is the start which it takes millions of years to get to this point. So I am going to explain this more to you so you understand it. The story that you have, we all have our past story. And most of us, again, what I'm talking about, this is not for average person, okay? So uh, this is not even for a beginner on spiritual path because they're not ready. This is advanced teachings, highly advanced. So the story of the I, the I thought. This I thought, this me, has a story. And you can look back at your own life. And as you look back at your own life, see how much you're being haunted by your past, whatever past you have, whatever is your story. And if you also look around with other people, you can see how attached how deeply they are invested into their story, whatever is the story. Yeah, you know what, we are Iranians and we come from Iran and we migrated here to the US and we lost our country and but we are holding our traditions and yada 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 yada. Oh, we are Americans or we are Norwegian and and this is how we do things in Norway and this is how you can just see when you are talking to people how deeply they are identified to their nationality, to their traditions, to their religion, to their race, whatever is the story. And then how much you can see they are identified to their emotional stuff that has happened. And they carry this for a long time. Like, okay, I, when I was eight or ten years old, I got abused. My mom was abusive. She was alcoholic. She used to burn my hand with a cigarette or she slapped me around. Uh, my stepdaddy raped me. Or, or all these horror stories that I hear from my people I work with which are very valid and they did happen. I'm not saying the story is not real, it didn't happen. Or whatever emotional stuff that we have gone, all the traumas that we have gone through our lives. I'm not denying it that none of it happened. We all have our own share of the story. But what I'm saying is they all, this I thought, this thought that I am someone separated from everything is hanging on 
to all these memories and all these stories.